Please remain standing as we read the scripture. And today, we had asked Ben Rio Muto to come and read the scripture for us. Uh, the time that Jesus was, that the, the story of the time that we read from the, today's scripture, Jesus was around 12 and 13. And Ben, you are 13. So we have uh, Ben to read it, remember, reminding us of the age that Jesus was there teaching all the laws of the te teachers of the law uh, about scripture. So let's hear the word of Jesus, God, from Ben. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. They started to look for him among their relatives and friends. They did not find him. They returned to Jerusalem and searched for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, asking them questions, and all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand him what he was saying, saying, said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in his heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Ben, thank you for leading us in worship. And I want to thank everyone who joined us today at worship as well. And for our choir, children's choir, we have our Christmas musical tonight. And I, the reason why I ask you to pray for it is because not only that it will be a time and the high point of our joy, but it also be a time that we can overflow that joy unto the world. So please remember that in your prayers, and remember to do all, um, join us at that time. So let me have a word of prayer, and then we're going to have a video, and we will go into the Word of God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time that we come together. We are grateful for your joy that overflows in our hearts. And even in the times that it seems like that joy is not there, help us to see how your joy is everlasting. Be with us as we listen to your words and your words only. May you be glorified. And may you work in our lives. We thank you and pray this all in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to welcome you once more who are here joining us in worship and all who are online uh, joining us in spirit and also for our Radical Rehabilitation members as well. I did want to share that we still have Christmas signs available. If you see downstairs in the, uh, when the lounge is, you'll see these sounds, signs. And if we can put it out in our lawns, that will be a great way for us to share uh, the spirit of Christmas and invite our neighbors and our friends. I also would like to ask you to look out for any kind of Facebook events. That's another great way just to share of where we should focus ourselves instead of all that the invites and all the preparation of the holiday. But as we are walking in this journey, we are trying to see Christmas in a different way as we see Christmas from the perspective of Mary. Mary, as you all know, was the mother of Jesus. 
and we know how her life had changed after the moment of Christmas. But at the same time, as we were backtracking from her death and how she had saw Christmas, we are coming to this point where Christmas had been the center and that Christmas had been connected to all the events. And today we are, go, as Ben had read uh, for us, we are going to see the story about how Mary and Joseph have lost Jesus. Now, just a disclaimer, we didn't ask Ben to read this just because of his tendency of wandering off, but just because he was uh, about the same age. But I'm so proud of how he done uh, this. Whenever I hear the story and read this passage, it remain, reminds me of the scene in Home Alone where Catherine O'Hare cries out, Kevin! I don't know if that is your favorite Christmas movie. Sometimes we wonder how in the world that can happen. But we also know that that's what happens. Our life cannot be perfect. No matter how well we pre prepare and no matter how tr we try, even the mother who had bear bore the Son of God had lost her son. But I do want to share a couple things that might ease us and give a little bit more credit and slack to Mary and Joseph. Because you might think, how in the world? Because when I see Catherine O'Hare's uh, face, I also see Mary who might have said, ah, this is not only my son, we have to remember this is God's son. And the terror that she might have had, oh, is God going to strike me with the lightning or thunder? Have you ever thought that that might have happened to her? So let me just read a couple of things that will give us a little bit more perspective. Now every year his parents, so Jesus' parents, went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. There's three big festivals that you have to travel all the way to Jerusalem. And Passover will be similar to our Easter celebration, but much more longer. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as a usual for the festival. If we go to the next one, we see how the festival ended after eight days. And they started to return. The boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among the relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. Now this is the point where I need to give you some cultural perspectives to make sure that we do not put Mary or Joseph in that horrible parent category. So in, Jeruc uh, in, Ju in Jewish culture, when you are with being a patriarchal uh, society, there is a big divide between the re responsibilities of the parents. So starting from the, the birth of the child, to age 12, mainly most of the parenting and teaching of their children relies on the responsibility of the mother. Now, in, in the Jewish culture, there is a longer period of breastfeeding. In the Jewish culture, we also remember the story of Moses, how she, the Moses' mother had used that time to teach Moses about the culture and tradition. And during that time, that's where the mother is attached and the son is attached with the mother. But at 12, what happens? So in our current age understanding, it's called bar mitzvah or bar mitzvah. Uh, you are now transitioning to become an adult. So that's the time, but it doesn't happen during the time of your birthday. It happens in Jerusalem. So this Passover when Jesus was 12, must have been the time where he became an adult. Whether you're a child to a man or a child to a daughter, this is that time. It still doesn't uh, answer a question of why they lost him, right? So let me give you another perspective. When they are traveling to Jerusalem, they normally travel in a large caravan with multiple of cousins and relatives and friends. We see that from the verse. They were searching and asking for friends and relatives. 
There's also a formation that you have to remember. In the front of the caravan, there's a group of men who lead the people. In the middle of the caravan, there's mother, mothers and children who are there. And at the end of the caravan, there's another group of men. Right? Can you imagine that? Now, the men, the women and the children, and another group of men. So when Jesus was traveling to Jerusalem during the time of Passover, he is a child, right? So where would Jesus have been at? In the middle. So they traveled to Jerusalem with Joseph up front, with the group and the relatives and the friends, and Mary with Jesus and other relatives and friends. They arrived at Passover and Jesus became a full adult and they're coming back and the relatives might have said, Mary, where's Jesus? And this is what I imagine Mary must have said. Don't you remember? Jesus now is an adult. He must be up there with his dad leading us as a full grown man. On the other hand, Joseph might have been asked that same question from his relatives and friends. Joseph, where is Jesus? I thought he was supposed to join us on our way back. And Joseph must have said, oh boy, he still thinks he's a child. He must be with his mom. And they traveled a day journey. And you might ask her, why is it a day journey? From their travel from Jerusalem to Nazareth, in their route, most likely Jericho, was the stopping point for their caravan for the first day. So after a long day of journey, now they are at the stopping point, and Joseph and Mary finally get together and say, Where's Jesus? I'm like, I thought he was with you. And we see that home alone moment all over. Does that give you a little bit more understanding of how this is possible? So after that day, they go back to Jerusalem. That takes another day. And they, after they arrive at Jerusalem, there's another day for them to search frantically of where Jesus is. This is the story that I thought I might have to give you a background understanding. But there's another question that we need to ask. Why in the world is this the only story of Jesus before his public ministry that, happens, that is happened to be written in the gospel? There's no other story. If you take apart all the Christmas stories and put them together, and if you put Jesus becoming public, there's no other story in the gospel that talks about Jesus' young age. There's a couple of reasons why we see this. Yes, we need to remember that Jesus was also a human. There's also another side of us knowing that even in the age of 12, Jesus was quite bright and brilliant. But there's another reason why Adam Hamilton in his book describes, and I think this is quite of a compelling reason. It's probably because Mary had talked about it a lot. Right? Who else would we hear the story from? If it wasn't from the account of Mary or Joseph, who at the time that the gospel was written had died. As a matter of fact, after this story, we don't see the name Joseph anymore. Mary must have talked about this a lot that it made so much significance that the people who were writing the gospel thought, we need to put this in. I believe that there's many other stories that Mary would have shared because it's a son of God. Maybe there might have been a miracle, but it was not recorded in the gospel. And there is a reason why this was recorded, and I hope that we can find that. As we go back to the scripture, we're going to come to see Mary and Joseph finding Jesus in the temple. After three days, like I said, they found Jesus in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at the understanding and his answers. The first thing is, yes, Jesus in his age, it is quite brilliant that he was able to make a discussion and converse with all these teachers of the law. But I also see a glimpse of a moment when Mary saw the scene. Remember, she was searching for Jesus all around Jerusalem. She might have gone through all these marketplaces, even to a morgue. We don't like that. 
but she needs to prepare for everything. And she did not see him around Jerusalem, and she comes back to the place where they might have last saw him. And look at seeing at Jesus, who's about 12 years old, sitting with the teachers, must have amazed Mary as well. Why was she amazed? I believe it was a flashback for Mary. I believe it was for her to be taken back onto the moment she knew that she will be pregnant with Jesus. When Gabriel said, you are the blessed one, you will have the Son of God with you. Or the moment that she had brought Jesus to the temple. This is another moment that she had brought Jesus to the temple. And at the temple, Simeon said, He will reveal the truth to many. And maybe that had been another flashback to Mary of reminding, Wow, yes, what Gabriel said, what Simeon said, it all makes sense. Why? Because of the age of 12, for 12 years, Mary might have been hustling and bustling and trying to raise the Son of God at the best as she could. But as she was consumed in parenting, she might also thought, this is my child. This is my child. Whenever a newborn or a parent comes in for infant baptism, this is how I start the session. I start the session by telling them one thing. That ain't your child. Let me share it again. The child that we have is not ours. We share the privilege of being a parent to them. We share the privilege of seeing the similar traits that we have, more of our negative traits than our positives through them. We share the experience of watching them and nurturing them to grow. But let me really ask you, does it always work that way? Let me really ask you, are they really yours? Our understanding of our children being ours could be a false notion because they are not ours they are God's children they belong to God and God gave us the blessing for us to be their angels during this time and this moment of life but we cannot control their life we cannot be there for them all the time it is only God who can be that figure be that true parent. And when we hold on to the fact that they are ours, we might not be able to see what God really does in their lives. Maybe, by any chance, Mary might have been amazed to remember that I have forgotten that. I forgot that this was God's child, and I thought that he was mine. And she might have been amazed to see once more how we need to turn around and remember how he belonged to God, but at the same time, how Mary belongs to God as well. When that happens, the same time she sees that amazement, she also has this anxiety that comes out and she says, when the parents saw that, she says, child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. That word, how have you treated us like this, might have been called the reason why she was astonished. Astonished, not only she was amazed, she might have been dumbfounded by what this child is doing. And in her astonishment, she might have said, why have you treated us like this? But if you go a little bit more further, can you see that this might have been the life story of Mary? We know how Gabriel came to Mary and miraculously gave a child to her. And Joseph embraced that as well. But how many of the other community members of the relatives or the friends might have embraced God's miracle? 
She might have shared that this is God's child, but they might have all nodded and in the back they started talking. Look at her. She says that she was pregnant by God. Do you believe that? Especially at the time when a single woman getting pregnant is much of, more of a taboo that you can lose your life because of that act. Think of the stigma that she had to endure throughout her own life. And now, 12 years she's been enduring that stigma and she almost lost her child. Isn't that a natural response of what Mary might have said to Jesus? Why have you treated a, me like this? Because she was trying to faithfully follow God's will, but in some ways she might have felt like she was swimming against the current. How many of us feel like that when we are living in this world that we feel like we are against the current? My, wife, my life is what a salmon, salmon might look like. They are always going upstream against the current. And how many of you trying to follow God's will feel like you are up against the current all the time? And where do you come to God to resolve that anxiety? Have you thought of coming to the cross and pouring it all down and say, Lord, why in the world are you treating me like this? I wanted to follow your ways. But the more I follow, it seems like the more difficult it is. The more I follow, it seems like the world is against me. The more I follow, I just get so tired. Have you ever came to the cross like that? No. I hope that you will. Because you can. That's what God does. God allows us to come and even complain. That's why Jesus said, if you have a burden, if you have a yoke, come to the cross and lay it down. I will make your yoke lighter. And Jesus asks us to come in those times when we feel like we are mistreated. Instead of us trying our best not to be mistreated in the world, like Mary, aren't we called to follow regardless and put all our burdens and our mistreatment in front of the cross and see how God makes that yoke lighter? And maybe at that moment when she had saw Jesus, she might have remind, it might have been a reminder for her and a confirmation that she was walking in the right direction. It all sums up when Jesus says, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? So the one who thought we thought was lost was not lost, but it was Mary and Joseph who was lost. They didn't understand that in that moment, but he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And Mary treasured all these things in her heart. I call this a turnaround moment for Mary. Mary who might have thought that Jesus was her son. Mary who thought that she was mistreated by this world. At that moment, she might not have fully understand the full extent of what is happening to her. But I believe that as she treasured this story in connection with Christmas, she started to realize and turn around and said, I'm walking in the right direction. I'm following God and I'm walking toward the right direction. The moment Gabriel came to me and turned my life upside down. And even though for the past 12 years it hasn't been that pleasant of a journey. 
that must have been a moment she realized that she is still walking in the right direction. And that direction over connected with Christmas, connected with the story of meeting Simeon, connected with this story of losing Jesus, and later on seeing Jesus on the cross, dying and resurrecting. And until the moment that she finally met God face to face. I believe this was a significant moment where she turned around and started to, uh, started to understand that she was on the right path. And I believe Christmas should be like that as well. Advent should be another time for us to turn around and remember that we are walking in the right direction of following God. We are riding, we're walking in that direction finding hope and peace and joy and love through God, not in the world. And right now we might not fully understand the full extent of what God is offering. But as we turn around and as we are astonished and amazed of that grace, I hope and pray that it will be another confirmation for us to continue to walk in this journey following the direction of God, no matter the cost it takes. And I hope and I pray when that King arrives, we will be able to rejoice and receive Him with our full life. So let us have a time of prayer. Like Mary, we might wonder. Like Mary, we might wander away from you. But like Mary, help us to be amazed by your presence. Help us to turn around and walk toward your direction. And help us to see your glory. We thank you and pray this all in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen.